the Valley of the Kings. A team of forensic experts is on the trail of Nefertiti and that lost Amarna dynasty. Led by Dr. Zahi Hawass, Secretary General of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities and explorer in residence for National Geographic, they've come to a dark and mysterious tomb known as KV-35. Inside a small side chamber, two mummies. They have been there for centuries, without coffins, without wrappings. Some believe they were moved from their original resting place, hidden away by priests to protect them from tomb raiders. Both of these mummies have at times been identified as Queen Nefertiti. Some have claimed that she is the body on the right, the so-called Elder Lady. But recently, in press reports around the world, she has been identified as the mummy on the left, known as the Younger Lady. Some scholars, they believe that this mummy is for Queen Nefertiti. If you are a scientist, you cannot announce a discovery unless you are sure 100% that this is mummy is for Queen Nefertiti. We are now in the beginning of scientific research to find out for the first time through the CT scan machine that can go inside the mummy. Tonight, the team has come for answers. Their goal, to get the scientific evidence that will establish whether either of these mummies could be Nefertiti. It's a groundbreaking investigation using the latest technology. A CT scan machine brought in by National Geographic specifically for this purpose. 21st century diagnostics for a mystery 3,000 years old. As part of the first set of CT scans ever performed on the royal mummies of Egypt, this non-invasive technology allows scientists to look inside a body in unprecedented three-dimensional detail without doing any harm. Dr. Hawass has called in two expert radiologists, Dr. Ashraf Salim and Dr. Hani Amer, to help in the investigation. It is a mysterious mummy. But today, maybe, we'll be able to find out exactly that this mummy is for Queen Nefertiti and maybe is not for the Queen. The idea of this so-called younger lady as Nefertiti has been a source of controversy in recent years. Some scholars make the claim based on several clues. The most important, a broken arm found in nearby wrappings. The hand once clenched a scepter the symbol of ultimate power in ancient Egypt, the sign of a pharaoh or a queen. Other clues in the identification, an indentation from a headband, and double pierced ears, all seem to match the last known images of the queen. But many scientists have argued that the case is purely circumstantial. My reaction when the news broke that Nefertiti had been discovered was complete rubbish. As far as I can see, it's absolutely no possibility whatsoever that mummy could be Nefertiti. There's a lot of princes by this time, probably a hundred. So it can, it can be any of these princes. Nefertiti wasn't just any princess. To track her down, you have to understand who she was. One of the great icons of the world. Born into nobility, growing into a beauty, she was chosen by the pharaoh Akhenaten to be his bride. Their love became the stuff of legend, literally carved into the stones of Egypt. They had six daughters together. According to some scholars, Akhenaten may have raised his love to a position of real power, not just wife and queen, but eventually, co-regent. Akhenaten wanted to present Nefertiti as somebody who was sharing power with him. There are a few reliefs in which, very unusually indeed, she's shown smiting Egypt's enemies, as if she's on the same military footing as her husband. But whether or not they ruled together, both shared the same fate, disappearing 
into the sands of Amarna.